Let's podcast alongside Joe Giglio. I'm Joe Ovias inside Eford Studios in downtown Raleigh. Thanks to Empire Properties. And of course, thanks to our presenting sponsor, Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. I feel I can feel it in my plums, Joe. We're almost there. School's about to start up. The football season's almost back. We actually have real things to talk about here soon. A lot to get into. We actually don't have a lot to get into today. Yes, you finally did it. We really don't. We made it. Look, Marcin- <laughs> write down the dates. Look, there's a uh, let's just let's, wait, 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 you write it down. <laughs> 20th. I'm just gonna put <laughs> Chilio <laughs> was right. Look, check. You know how I feel about these things in this business, it's theater of the mind in this business. The last thing you want to tell people is, y'all, there's just not a lot going on right now. I think people understand that implicitly, but you can't sell it that way. <laughs> you can't sell it that way. Because basically what you're doing is... There's no well, truth in advertising. Well, then, what, then, then why the hell am I listening if you're not really all that interested in any of these topics? Excuse me. It's not that I'm not interested in any of these topics. It's more along the lines of, how many more ways can we talk about these particular things? And we talk ourselves into knots about certain stuff. We see it's kind of playing out right now on the quarterback side of things. Okay. So this week we're getting a lot more clarity on who's going to be starting quarterback at the college level and the pro level. So for instance, Duke announced that Malik Murphy is going to be the starting quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils this year. I I always assumed that was going to be the case the minute the guy from Texas transferred to Duke. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like he has a lot of playing time. He only started two games for Texas uh, and wins over BYU and Kansas State. But I think he's only thrown 71 passes at this point. But he's talented enough to, to get recruited by Texas, so we'll see how it plays out at Duke. And we'll get an idea of what Manny Diaz wants to run offensively. Uh, shout out to Grayson Loftus. Did the dirty work last year when Riley Leonard got hurt. But again, it's Malik Murphy's show. You might be underselling Murphy there a little bit. It's entirely possible. Because remember, Texas was a playoff team last year. Texas beat Alabama early in the season. Yep. Then when Quinn Ewers got hurt, a lot of people were like, oh, okay, we'll just see Arch Manning now. And whether that was, you know, Manning family saying, don't burn a year of his eligibility, or whether that was Steve Sarkeesian going, you know, actually, we have another guy Mm -hmm. (laughs) who gives us a better chance to win football games. Entirely possible. Because the teams you just mentioned, BYU, fine. Kansas State, as we saw in the bowl game against NC State, that's a that's a for, formidable team, a well coached team. Uh, easily could have derailed Texas's season last year. So I thought Murphy was really important to sustaining what they were doing last year. That's a Texas at, at Texas, sure. <laughs> I mean, you know how I feel about Texas. Texas, I thought Texas was the most talented team in the country last year, uh, and they had every chance to win the national championship last year. It just didn't break their way against Washington in the playoff game. And, and to be clear, I'm giving Manny Diaz runway at Duke because there's a lot to overcome after two years of Mike Elko and the identity that they had and the defections they had this offseason with sure. the coaching change. So I'm giving Manny Diaz a little bit more runway this season than people might think. I, I think just as Tom O'Brien had Mike Glennon in, in the holster there when Russell left, mm-hmm. a lot of people are going to wa- watch Riley Leonard this year and be like, damn, that guy's good yeah, at man. Notre Dame. Yeah, man. Preseason top ten team. I, I think Notre Dame is going to be really good this year with him. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to then you go back and look at Duke. And like, hey, you know what? Manny scrambled. Manny got a really good quarterback, and that's why Nina King hired Manny Diaz. You know, we we kind of don't have. The, I don't. I won't put words in your mouth. I'm not that impressed with Manny as an actual coach, X as a head coach kind of guy. Yeah. Even as a head coach, I'm just kind of like, all right. Now, in fairness to him. I, he did not get the longest leash in the history of the world at Miami. Nope. Um, and and you look at it and you go, okay, well, let's see what he can do with this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Nina saw something and said, I think this is the person and the direction that we need to go in NIL wise. This is how college sports and college football in particular is changing. And this gives us the best chance. She also hired Mike Elko, and you know I have the highest opinion you could possibly have of Mike Elko right sure. behind Dave Clawson. Sure. So my my thought process was that was jarring for me to see the same person go from, okay, l- let's bring in Mike Elko, who's an unbelievable ex and coach, to let's bring in Manny, who's a little bit more of that salesman. Mm-hmm. But 
one of my favorite things that Roy Williams ever said to me was, you know, don't start with that recruiting doesn't count as coaching thing. Okay. Don't even start with that, Joe, because recruiting is part of coaching mm-hmm. and the players that you put on your team, that's the, that's the biggest part of your job. So Manny's never had a problem recruiting. No, Manny's he has never had a problem selling. There's a, clearly a thought process with what Nina King is trying to do on the football side of things. Yeah. Um, you're seeing the changes over at Wallace Wade Stadium. As I joked earlier last week, you know, Duke's more notable. Actually, I think I mentioned this on the on the ACC Panic Room, all part of your OG fans subscription, that Duke's upcoming season is more about how they're trying to differentiate themselves from Carolina and NC State with the Devil's Deck, with the DJs, with what Nina's trying to build with Manny Diaz as a potential CEO type, bring the recruits in and then have people around to, to execute. So I'll just go back to what I said with, with Duke as we kind of stumbled in this conversation about what to expect out of them. Yeah, maybe Malik Murphy is that guy, but I also know they've had a lot of other things to have to replace after Mike Elko left. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm giving Manny the, the runway. On the I think th- they're in a better position, though, than when Cut left. I, 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 I think agree. Mike put him in a better position, even if you had players leave and go to Notre Dame and go here and there. Totally agree. I, I think Mike has them in a mi- more of a mindset of, okay, this can be done. You know, they ran Clemson out of the gym last year. Yes. Uh, something I'm still kind of waiting for state to do. But here's the but, here, but here's where I'll push. <laughs> here's where I'll say there's a difference. You are right in that Duke is in a better position today after two years of Mike Elko than they were at the end of the David Cutcliffe era, which had clearly run its course and people were just everybody was just down yeah. at that point. I mean, there's a pandemic. There's however the idea of how much it's changing. One of your great points is there's a yin and yang to the universe. We mm-hmm. always talk about state and Carolina. Yeah. Well, truly, the true yin and yang and the true push and pull is Wake and Duke. And when one of them becomes good, it becomes, well, why can't you be good? Yeah, totally get that. And, and I think Duke and Nina are showing a real, are taking a real proactive stance mm-hmm. here in what they're doing with Manny. Malik Murphy is proof positive of that. But the reason why... Duke looked the way that they looked is because it's the same reason why Texas A&M in an odd sort of way did a humble hire with Mike Elko in that we know what the Mike Elko identity is. It's a tough-minded football team that we hadn't really seen at Duke outside of really one season under David Cutcliffe that got them to the Coastal uh, Division Championship and against Florida State in the uh, ACC Championship game. That I don't know what Manny's identity is. I don't know if they're tough-minded. I don't know if it's like, we're just going to go out there and out-physical you, uh, which is weird to say about Duke, but that's kind of what Mike Elko was. That was a tough football team. Particularly on defense, particularly in the secondary. And that comes from a mindset from the head coach. Sure. I don't know what that is with Manny, who has a, a checkered track record when it comes to this sort of thing. So, go over to Carolina, whereas Malik Murphy is the name of the starting quarterback. You go over to Carolina, we still don't know who the quarterback is going to be. And North Carolina seems more interested in playing games at this point. The, the classic football gamesmanship between coaches. You know, Minnesota is not going to show you who their starter is going to be. We're not going to show you who our starter is going to be. You joked about it with Mac Brown at ACC kickoff about the spring game. Yeah. Right down to, well, we don't want to show you anything, not only because we don't want to show you anything schematically, we also don't want any play, you to get any ideas about our players that could transfer. So, Carolina is kind of entering the season in almost cutesy mode. And, and that gets back to the start of this conversation where we keep talking about the same stuff over and over again with Carolina in particular. Sure. Can we just play some damn football games for them? Like, I just yeah. like who, who is like, oh, okay. The starter. Yeah. I've heard about Max Johnson. Yeah. Connor Harrell. And yeah. Jacoby Criswell. And yeah. Mari Hampton. Blah, 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 blah. I'm ready for football when it comes to Carolina, man. As a beat writer, I hated quarterback competitions. Yeah. Because everyone had an idea of what it was supposed to be, but that's not how you write. You have yeah. to write what people tell you. You have to yeah. write what you know. Yeah. And I, great moments in 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 Joe beat writing history. It was the Ryan Finley, Jalen McClendon, right? <laughs> oh, right. So right. And Jalen McClendon was extremely popular with his teammates. Okay, extremely popular. And when Drink Eli Drinkwitz came in and brought Ryan Ryan Finley with him from Boise State. And and Ryan Finley, this is the real reason that Ryan Finley all these years later still doesn't like me. <laughs> it's because I called him the teacher's pet. Oh, dude. And and to come a, on, man. But that's that was how he was viewed, Joe. All right. All In right. that locker room, those players looked at Jalen McClendon as one of their guys 
who had been there with him. Mm -hmm. He was athletic as all get out, yeah, as yeah. you saw when he went to Baylor and, yep. and, and even in the NFL. They looked at him and said, "Here, not not that different, not uh, not entirely different again from the Mikey G and, and Russ situation. Mm -hmm. Here's this guy in practice. He's been with us. We know this guy. We've seen him put the work in. So when Ryan and and Drink got here, yeah, you're looking at this guy going, "Who's this guy? He's the, he knows the playbook. He knows this. He knows that. That's the teacher's pet, Joe. Is, okay, is that Max Johnson? Well, I, I, to finish the story." I wrote something about like basically saying Ryan Finley is going to be the starter. Sure. But here's why this decision is taking as long as it's, it is taking. Mm -hmm. And I, had, at this time, the portal hadn't been open. And I kind of intimated, like, if you name a starter on August 1st, guess what? The other guy's going to leave. Yeah. And so fine. I think it was like a week before the game and, you know, drink and, and Jacoby Myers was involved in that too. Don't forget. He was still playing quarterback. You mean Jacoby Brissett? No, Jacoby Myers. Remember, oh, Jacoby he came Myers. in as a quarterback. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay I totally and, forgot and, about and, that. And my boy Svenge over Jeez. at Pac, my, my boy Svenge, I think he was still at Pac Pride at the time. Yeah. You know, all the message boards were like, Jacoby Myers is amazing in practice. He's doing all this. He's doing all that. Never forget, Jacoby Myers is the worst trick play quarterback in the history of the fucking world. Okay? <laughs> I, I've never seen somebody who allegedly played quarterback throw so many bad passes to open receivers as Jacoby Myers. So Myers was involved in all the message board. Oh my God. Yeah. Joey Myers was lighting up practice. Yeah, and then yeah, it was yeah. like Jalen McClendon. Oh my God. He's so big. This and that. And then it was like, well, yeah, then there's the teacher's pet. There's Ryan Finley. There's Ryan Finley. He knows the playbook. He doesn't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He gets the ball out. He distributes the ball. So this sounds familiar. Finally, a week before I get a DM from drink that goes, Hey, you finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Hey man, I'm a little bit slow, but I mean, come on. And he, he basically said, he's like, yeah, if I if I say that Jalen's not starting or Jacoby's not playing, they're both going to leave. They're out. He goes, now I don't have a backup. Mm -hmm. And yeah, turns out Ryan Finley made a shit ton of money for Eli Drickwitz. Mm -hmm. He probably owes him royalty checks. Mm -hmm. And Dave Dorant. They both owe a lot of money to, to Ryan Finley and what he was able to do and the success they were able to have in those 16 and 17 and 18 seasons. So what you're telling me is Max Johnson's going to start against Minnesota. Um. No, I, it's funny. I was in a bar in Greenville mm -hmm. last week mm -hmm. and I saw the Ole Miss Texas A&M game on TV. Oh, geez. Okay. And I'm looking up and there's this lefty throwing the ball and I'm like, shake my head, do a double take. I go, oh shit, that's Max Johnson. It's Max Johnson. And he lit, now, keep in mind, he lit up Ole Miss. Yeah. Lit them up. And I'm yeah. going, wow, this guy's definitely going to be the starter for Carolina. Look at this. In that game, he threw four. Let me put my glasses back on for you. He threw, he completed 31 of 42 passes for 305 yards. Here's the problem. Ole Miss was awful on defense last mm -hmm. year. Awful. So I saw Max Johnson's best game. Here, here's what Minnesota is going to do, though. Which real quick about Max Johnson, to your point, and how it's similarities with the teacher's pad, or you're, you're keeping this competition going, but when you're looking at the bigger picture, uh, you start to put the math together. One thing that Mac Brown keeps selling Again, Max, a really good salesperson, really good salesperson, is all the reps he had in the SEC. They're really valuing that. And they're also valuing how Amari and Hampton is going to be the key component to this. Oh, yeah. And if it's about getting the ball where it needs to be, not turning the ball over, well, then your answer is pretty clear. It's going to be Max Johnson. Could you see Connor Harrell in that game against Minnesota? Potentially. Max left that open. He's done it before. Yeah. But Max Johnson's going to start. I think we'll definitely see both of them, but Mac has fooled me before, so we'll see. It's fooled a lot of people. But you look at this and you go, now, here's what Minnesota's going to do, okay? And this is what always kind of makes me laugh about coaches. And 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 I, again, I have zero problems with these coaches publicly being like, you know, hey, I'm not telling you because they're not telling wink, wink, nod, yeah, nod. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, here's what Minnesota is doing right now, okay? Uh, on Synergy or whatever the football equivalent of Synergy is, mm -hmm. they have every snap that Max Johnson's ever taken at Texas a huddle. Okay. So they're looking at all of his snaps and they're going, okay, here, and this is somebody's job. You know, this is either not, not like South Carolina's former head coach, but it's like someone like me who's like, Hey, I just want to help. I want, I want to break down film. I want to chart shit for you. Yeah. Okay. They're going, Hey, okay. Give me Max Johnson's 25 best plays at Texas A&M. So they're looking at Max Johnson's 25 best plays at Texas A&M. Okay. Well, here's where he's best. This is how he's best used. Mm -hmm. This is how Carolina is going to use them. Okay. That means 
it isn't like Nebraska's coming out there and we're going to run the triple option. No. Paul Johnson's not calling Carolina's plays for this game. It's, They're not going to the Vera wing. It's okay. Not, it's not this, complicated. This, we're, you're going to get to the blue hands. Give me the wing team. Baby. You're going to give, you're going to, you're going to get Max Johnson. Carolina's giving Max Johnson what he's most comfortable at. Connor Harrell, we saw him in the bowl game. Again, mm-hmm. I was impressed with the bowl game. Maybe I was just looking at it through the lens of people put too much weight now into bowl games. Like, oh my God, it's the end of the world, right? Like, I think state's going to get killed by Tennessee. Why? Because the, the guy with the greatest name in the history of the transfer portal, I'm a leaving, was awesome in the bowl game against Iowa. So what? You still fall for that. Yeah. I don't. I know. But I yeah. know. I know this, yeah. and you know this. Yeah. But I looked at Connor Hill in the bowl game, and I was like, "Oh yeah, they lost, and there was some there was some issue, ball security potential issues there." But I'm looking at him going, "Kid's athletic." Mm-hmm. And if Amari and Hampton is your answer, and you're going to build around Amari and Hampton, well, you know, I I, I want to run a read option where there's an actual threat for the quarterback to keep okay. it. See, now that's where the wrinkle is. That's where the wrinkle is. How good is offense? How good is North Carolina's offensive line going to be? I think that's the X factor in all of this. Status quo. I mean, why would they be significantly better? Why would they be significantly worse? If it's if it's not significantly better or significantly worse, then you might want to put in somebody like Connor Harrell who gives them another option physically. A little more wiggle. A little bit more wiggle room to yeah. run the ball. To your set, to your point. You got you gotta you gotta keep the other team on their toes when it comes to that kind of stuff. Max Johnson's not that guy. So if you're gonna if you're gonna set him up out there. To get pressured all the time, you better get that ball out quick. He's a big old lefty, though. I did not realize yeah. that until watching the. So wow, managed to uh, managed to eke out a little conversation about quarterbacks there. Um, over in the NFL, you're seeing some clarity. Although when you look at the NFL clarity, you're going, man, the you wonder why the you wonder why the Chiefs keep finding ways to win Super Bowls despite the fact they might have middling regular seasons by their standards. Well, look around, Joe. The Raiders are down to Gardner Minshew to start, right? Minshew madness. So the Steelers are going to be, yet again, another just train wreck offensively to watch when they have to settle for the carcass of Russell Wilson going forward. Maybe Justin Fields sees the sees the action I'm going the, forward. I'm Minnesota, the only one who's high on my Steelers right now. I think you are. Me, Min, Minnesota was, was going to be a team that people were like, oh, don't be surprised if, because they've got all the other pieces and they were going to rely on J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. But J.J. McCarthy's hurt, and now you're left with Sam Darnold. Meanwhile, how do I fade the Vikings? Meanwhile, Atlanta, you're just going with Kirk Cousins and what he gives you, but everybody's going to be pining for Michael Penix. Uh, Look, hey, Washington is going with Jaden Daniels. Okay, cool. Um, Patriots will probably start Jacoby Brissett. You know, we were playing a clip yesterday from Colin Cowherd about the Patriots. We can make fun of the fact that Colin Cowherd is now late to the Drake Mays actually kind of good party. No, the best part was, you know, I was watching the game. Well, there's the first hey, step, right? <laughs> but the problem in a couple of plays. So I can make fun of the way that Colin Cowherd came to this epiphany for Drake May, but he is right about the current state about the Patriots yes. and where they are. Offensive lines are wreck. They don't really have anything in the skill position. Really, what this season should be about isn't about whether they found their next Tom Brady and Joe Milton. It's man, Bill Belichick really ran this thing into the ground. And this is a real legitimate rebuild with the Patriots. And maybe you don't want to throw Drake May out there from the jump. So I can see Jacoby Brissett, the other Jacoby, getting that time to uh, to start things off. And then we get to the, the, the fascination of this week in the NFL. We've gone through our Caleb Williams stuff. We've gone through uh, the J.J. McCarthy's throwing piss missiles moment before he got hurt. <laughs> We've now Elite landed ball, please. We've now landed on Bo Nix discourse, Joe. Can't wait. Are you ready for the Bo Nix discourse? Speaking of our guy, uh, Colin Cowherd, he also came to the epiphany in watching Bo Nix and the uh, Denver Broncos over the weekend. Let me turn on the sound here. Bo Nix is really good right now. Top three quarterbacks taken have defensive coaches. He has Sean Payton, defensive coach. Or next to Andy Reid, arguably the best offensive coach in football. Think it matters for a young quarterback? 61 college starts. Are you watching this kid? He is tearing it up. I know what you're saying. Colin, you can't judge the preseason. Time out. You going to tell me, all you fanboys for Dak Prescott, after one preseason game, you were like, get Tony Romo out of here. Remember that game at the Coliseum in L.A.? Uh, You literally made a decision, Super Bowls to follow. You can see overwhelmed very quickly. You can see bad mechanics, anxiety from a quarterback very quickly. You can see when somebody's got it. Bo Nix has it. Bo Nix has it, Joe. He was an early mover. 
uh, on Bo Nix. I'll give he him credit. Was. But he I, in a different clip, I think he gave it away because he was like, Sean Payton was texting me. And I was like, oh, okay. Remember, he, he was at Fox there for a hot I minute. was blown away watching. Now, again, it was a yin and the yang. I'm watching mm-hmm. the Jets and Panthers set football back 50 years the other day. And then the next <laughs> game is the Broncos. And Sean Payton literally had the whole playbook unveiled for Bo Nix. And I'm sitting here going, oh, oh, dear. Like, uh, people are down on the Broncos, and I get that, but they might not be terrible. What does Bill Belichick think they should do with Bo Nix? Well, I, I think this year is going to be fascinating in two senses because we have Bill Belichick now, yeah. ESPN analyst, right? Yes. And we have Tom Brady is going to be a Fox analyst. So you got let, these, let's hold on. Let's hold on Tom Brady here for a so second. So you got two legends now who are coming into the game. Bill Belichick is obviously an erudite. He's obviously a guy who has cared more about more things than just football, but he's also a very smart guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now he is smart in the sense that he never wanted to share any of that, particularly in a media press conference or scrum setting where he did not feel like the people who were asking him the questions were worthy of his erudite answers. But you know who is the mulleted guy with a mustache on the Pat (laughs) McAfee show. He is on the same level with Bill Belichick to actually answer questions. So now this this dance that Belichick's doing is slightly interesting <laughs> in the sense that you basically told everyone to fuck off yes. for, for 20 years as the head coach. And, Other than, you know, here and there, and, you you opened up. I still enjoy the Nick Saban special that he did for HBO. And now he gets to go on with the dude who I always forget his name, who's always wearing some sort of airbrushed shirt with a mustache and a mullet, got a job at Chick-fil-A. Some people will get that reference. And uh, the, 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 the homie asked Bill Belichick, you know, what would you do with Bo Nix? Well, I, I think you go with him when you feel like he's ready to go. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put a, a rookie quarterback in there. Like, just, let's, for example, here. What I don't think you want to do is put uh, Bo in there and then after three or four games, uh, find out you need to take him out and put Stid back in there and, and go that way. I, I don't think that would work. Uh, I think that just creates a lot of confusion, and I, I don't think I really don't think that's what you want to do. If you're sure Bo Nix is the guy, then you go with him, but you don't turn back. You do you, you stay with him all the way through. Um, if you go the other way and start with Stid, who's actually played, I think, pretty well in the preseason. Uh, you know, he showed some toughness scoring last week, and and uh, you know had an interception when the ball got batted at the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, overall, I thought he's done a decent job. If you feel like he gives your team a better chance to win, and and you want to give you know the younger player a little more chance, and you don't think he's quite ready yet, then then when you make that move, you're going to make it, whether it's the start of the season, week three, week six, week eight, at the bye week, whatever it is. Once you make that move, then you know I think you're committed to it all the way. I just hear a bunch of coach speak still. Um, first of all, uh, I said this last week on this program. So again, the people who are like, you don't know anything about football. Okay, well. Here, here's Bill Belichick saying the same thing. That yeah, I said. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, second of all, Bill, it's okay. Just say, I, I didn't watch the game like Jillio did. I didn't bet on the Broncos minus six and a half. <laughs> That's all you have to say. That's really all you have to say. This is Coach Speed. Because I watched Bo Nix the other night. Yes, I bet on the game, but I watched the game and I'm like, Sean Payton ain't effing around. No, he's he not. He is not. Like, this is not a soft launch. This is, here is my guy. Here is my Drew Brees without the shoulder problems. And we are going coming in hot with this kid. Yeah, what what he did, what what Sean Payton did is old school football coach. Uh, we're going to create the illusion of an actual competition, but we know what we drafted in Bo Nix, and he's going to start the season. Sean Payton's a whole lot smarter than I'll ever be when it comes to football. There was no way on God's green earth he was starting Stid. Yeah, he was not going into a season completely punting no. by starting Jared F and Stid. And then you also tie that with to your point about Cowherd. He's like, well, I was texting with Sean Payton. He knows how to play the game. Correct. Yeah. He absolutely knows how to play the game in that regard. Meanwhile, you've got uh, Tom. And also, by the way, poor Russ. Right. What about him? Like Peyton goes into that situation, takes one look at Russ. I think they even beat the Chiefs. Yeah. And he goes to him the next week and he's like, yeah, man. So about that guaranteed deal, we're going to need you We're to done opt out of that. We're done here with that. <laughs> you, you think he said that not knowing what the consequence was going to be? He knew what it was. You, you don't think his, his perma wood is walking around right now with his tight pants, no, knowing he has a quarterback that he not only 
has under control, but can control, can control. as opposed to the nano bubbles. Like, yes. hey, Russ, maybe I can get you to run on this down. Nah, nah, coach. I, I got to work on my uh, I got to work on my pocket passing. But doing some drills with Dana. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not running anymore. Speak- oh, OK. Can't really. Have, I don't really have a whole lot of use for you then, sir. Speaking of the nano bubbles and uh, older quarterbacks that are still trying to act as though they're in the best shape of their life uh, at oh. their old age. Not Josh Allen. No, you're finally seeing it with Tom Brady, aren't you? Oh, yeah. you're finally seeing it. You're finally seeing it. <laughs> Popped on my timeline. Is it right? <laughs> right? I'm going to give you two. You you sent me this. So here's Tom Brady. This he's, was, he's thirst trapping on a couple different levels there, that's, right? That's what like, it was. Yeah, there was like a video vignette of him leaving uh, Paris for the Olympics, and the aggregator ML football caught this. <laughs> so you're just flexing for social media these days. I just want to make sure all those young bucks in the NFL know that if I still wanted to come out of retirement. All the way out. Way out, way out. They still got something to deal with. If I come out of retirement, buddy, why are we still talking about you coming out of retirement? We're one Brock Purdy injury away, baby. Telling you, man. Can't wait. I'm telling you. Here's the thing about Tom Brady uh, as a broadcaster. I understand why television executives have gone after Tom Brady. I, I understand why. I understand why the McAfee's ESPN wants to get Bill Belichick in to just talk straight football. Totally understand that. But what I think those executives fail to understand is that Tom Brady has an inability to connect with an audience straight up. He can connect with his teammates. Sure. He'll lead your ass out there to a Super Bowl. He can connect with coaches. But it's very difficult to connect with an audience. And right now, Tom Brady's best move, and I've seen this pop up, on the aggregators is talking about how football ain't what it used to be. See, when I played, <laughs> no, he's, he is, I, he is speed running nineties NBA discourse. He's already doing it. I saw some aggregated clip about him saying, well, yeah, I know they really dumbed things down now for quarterbacks. You know, the product that you get right now is just not, yeah, man, the game has changed. I get all that. Oh, stuff. that's right. He was talking about being developed at Michigan and how he learned, and he was actually developed. And I was developed. He didn't start as a rookie, and you know, I had to learn when I went to the Patriots. And it's like, okay, man, back in my day, back, it's, it, that's essentially what Brady's going to be. It's going to be a lot of back in my day. And once he gets into the broadcast booth, it's funny how everybody's obsessing over who, which quarterback is starting in preseason and which quarterback isn't starting in preseason. You know who actually hasn't even really fully called a game yet? Brady. So they're not even kind of like slow rolling them out for a national preseason game. So I'll be really curious to see how it's this got plays three out. Man booth written all over. I it. don't think. I think that. I think the Brady broadcast experiment is not going to go well because I just don't think Brady has a warmth about him that is sellable to a large mainstream audience. Yeah, I mean it's the one area where Peyton Manning is absolutely better than Tom Brady. Yes, easily. Easily. And when he tries to make himself an everyman, we saw it with the roast of Tom Brady, and he ends up having regrets about that because he basically allowed a bunch of people to make a bunch of jokes about the mother of his children. Right. So it's like, come on, man. He tr- he, tr- he tries a little too hard in that regard. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to watch all these games in person from the booth, and it's going to kill him. Definitely, he's his definitely mind, rooting for a Brock Purdy or two a tongue of Iowa injury. In his mind, he still thinks he's good oh, enough man, to I'm, play. I've been throwing, I've been throwing the ball back into the jugs machine. You saw that, yeah, and it's fine. I mean, I get that. That's his mindset. I get it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not belittling his mindset. That's how he's, yeah, become as successful as he is. But at some point, you gotta let it go. And every indication that I see from Tom Brady is that he has not let it go. No, never forget, man. Giselle gave him an ultimatum, and, and he, he was like, said, and he chose football. Housekeeping. Brought to you by Inovana. They're very, the communication's off the charts. So they're at the house today. They shoot me a text. Inovana will be there in 15 minutes. Awesome. Appreciate you letting me know. In, out, clean house. Can't ask for much more than that. Check them out online, Inovana.com. Green cleaning solutions. If you have mess inside your mansion or trash in your Gabbana, get it green clean with Inovana. Podcast Festival is on Saturday. Get hype at the Rialto. Get your tickets at the last minute. It's cool. You can even get them at the door that day. Head on over to Rialto.com, though, to buy your tickets. And uh, we'll see you starting at 6 o'clock at the Rialto for us. Hand in the dirt. And, of course, shut down full cast with Spencer Hall, Holly Anderson, and the crew. Should be a lot of fun. 
Uh, the party doesn't stop on Saturday, though. You can go to Quail Ridge Books on Sunday, where Jason Kirk, part of Shutdown Fullcast, has a book called Hell's World Without You. We talked to Jason a few weeks ago about his book. Really interesting conversation, really interesting book, entertaining book. And he'll be speaking and signing books at Quail Ridge on Sunday. Again, you can go to Quail Ridge's website to find out more information about that event. We cannot do the podcast festival without our friends at Breeze Through. Check them out online at breezethrough.com. Got a food truck too. Let's say the tailgating, right? Breeze Through, they're outside Carter Finley Stadium, has spots for you to park. They have that. They have food. They have all kinds of beverage options. All uh, good. Hydration options, mm-hmm. snack options. Go it's check good, them out. It's good stuff. Meanwhile, we got Homefield showing up to the podcast festival. There's an exclusive podcast festival hoodie that we will be selling. We I will, think it's that logo right there, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's right here. Let me actually pull it out from underneath my football almanac. Your favorite <laughs> thing ever. Yeah, there's. there we go. That's what's going to be on the hoodie. It's going to be very cool. Homefield is going to be there with some other stuff as well. We'll have access to hats, by the way. And if you want to buy something from Homefield right now, you can go to the website, homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code OG20. Those team boxes look pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Although we were told there's no Tar Heel box? Not yet. I don't think there's a Tar Heel box. You got to work on that, though. Get there. Got to work on that. Big thanks to Nature's Relief. Check them out online. Nature's Relief Hempstore.com. R E L E A F Hempstore.com. Try to convince Jillio to do a hippie sip before the podcast festival instead of a shot of the Colonel in a smoothie. What do you think? No, we decided <laughs> we don't need my. Sense is dull. We don't. We don't need heightened. you getting comfortable in a chair on the Rialto stage with a bunch of people watching. You don't want to do that. No. I took half a gummy last night uh, from Nature's Relief. It's a uh, it's a Delta Nine. It's a hybrid. It's supposed to be calming, but also a little bit more like active. Okay. It's a nice little hybrid. And took a half of one. Watched uh, the morning show on Apple TV. The one with Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, and just and Reese Witherspoon. I just zoned out. Is that still on? They just started their third season, actually. How? Great question. Isn't Steve Carell dead? Spoiler? What, on the show? Yeah. I don't know. I just got done with season one. Oh. <laughs> Did Michael Scott die? Ah, oh, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Did he die? Well, I guess I'll have to find out how he dies. <laughs> Did he declare bankruptcy? Thanks for ruining the show. <laughs> Well, if you've watched season one, you've seen the only good season. Oh, is it? Is it one yeah, of those shows? I mean, yeah, you had the tension of Matt Lauer and you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever. Okay. And then okay. me too, right? And then season two is like, well, what do we do now? It's like, yeah, well, I guess I'll find out. You know, the, the old, the age old uh, axiom there of Sam and Diane. Wait, they can't be together because <laughs> what, did Steve Carell go to a diner and then all of a sudden the show cut off? With Don't Stop Believing? I mean, you just want me to go full on? I could <laughs> no. be misremembering. No, but. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you're right. I think he probably dies. But I guess I'll find out how it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's like uh, the, the, the dragons. We know she dies. We know how she dies. I mean, freaking Joffrey spoiled it. But, just got to see how it works out. Yeah. One of the things that we do in lightning round is we go through Instagram reels, Facebook reels that Jillio gets fed to him months after the fact. Yeah. Like time. They're not new. Time is, does not exist. <laughs> it's, it's irrelevant in the world of the algorithm feeding Jillio random things. But there was one thing that you asked me before the start of the show in relation to sororities and these dancing reels that you seem to be getting fed. Now. I, I'm super confused by them. So to, if you haven't seen them, if you have not been fed these videos on your favorite social media app, essentially it is mostly SEC country sororities. Correct. That have an entire 1930s Hollywood dance routine in front of the, the sorority building, the house. I would say it's more like a strip routine choreographed stripper. Now remember routine. Joe. Remember Joe. The algorithms are built brick by brick I, by their I user. Get, I, I get that part. So like when I you get the very famous instances in which like a pastor will do this whole <laughs> sermon about how TikTok is the devil's feed and you have to remind the pastor 
Hey, man. Yeah, that's because you've shown an interest or lingered a little bit too long. TikTok knows how long you stay I, on something and I, will keep feeding that to you, my I, dude. Honestly, <laughs> I've watched these trying to figure out, like, okay, now, are they trying to appeal to me? Yeah. Or are they trying to appeal to, like, 19, 20, 21 year old that women that, on campus that to come join them? Yes. Is yes. that how it works? Yes. Now, look, I mean, I'm 50. What do I know? Well, here's the thing. I think it all comes down to the whole premise of sororities and fraternities, right? I was, look, up front, man, I never understood the point of fraternities. No, I, I understand both. I don't understand how basically doing a strip routine with your friends wearing next to nothing in front of the house yeah. is appealing to other women. That's the part. Because you want to be part of that club. You want to you want to be hot. You want to get all the views. You're the main character. Oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't calculating the views. Yeah, it's it's. It, I mean, look, there's an appeal. There's an the, appeal to, to being, being a part. popular and yes. views. Okay. Yes, like I'm part of this group. Look how popular we are. We are the baddest women on campus. Like that sort of thing. Okay. I mean, that I mean, would I, be the- I I had a legitimate question, so I, I just. Figured sometimes you know more about these things. Than I, I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to know it all here. I'm just telling you what I think the appeal is. And maybe that's because of the. So, again, now, I say the this most somebody, common comment that I see, though, of course, is all about the football players at those schools now having these people on their buffet, if you will. Yeah, I mean, but has that always been the case? I, I'm just saying that's not a new phenomenon. <laughs> I know. I understand. That. I mean, what, so maybe that's what the maybe now that's what the videos are for. This bothers me. That's what the videos are for. Maybe they're actually recruiting. Like latent recruiting tools for Tennessee. I don't know. It's just sometimes I guess people act. How, how naive are you? Oh, not me. I'm no, no. I'm just saying, like, oh, this must be for the football players. Yeah, <laughs> when it comes to recruiting, that's always part of the sell. <laughs> maybe, my, maybe Lane Kiffin's over there, like, okay, <laughs> he's like the he's like Burt Reynolds, yeah, maybe in Boogie Nights. He's over there choreographing the video. I don't know. I really don't know. But I think I preface this by saying I did not understand the point of fraternities when I was younger. Okay. You know, for me, you grow up, your parent, your dad shows you Animal House and you just think, oh, the fraternity is just a group of like dudes and they all get drunk and they party. And that's the case oftentimes. And for me, when I went to NC State, the whole appeal of fraternities just was lacking for me. I just didn't understand the point of like, wait a minute, I have to pay dues. You're going to make, you're going to embarrass me to feel like part of the club. Like I'm not, it, it does not compute. Like it, they, my brain just does not accept that, right? But as I get older and, you know, you get to know people who were in fraternities and things like that, it's a networking opportunity. Sure. You know, you, you got these brothers for life. You, Lamb oh, Kai till I die, man. Right, my, man. my man, P-Dog. You know, I got, you know, a buddy of mine who's in a fraternity or was in a fraternity will constantly talk about how he connects and networks with other guys in his fraternity who can then connect them to somebody who was a couple years behind all through that fraternity. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. From a networking perspective, totally understand where that's coming from. But never underestimate the value of like a cult like grouping. So there was a there was a documentary called Bama Rush about the very secretive process about joining an Alabama sorority. Okay. And never underestimate the pull or the appeal of being part of something that is highly selective to get into. Okay. And once, what you're saying. and once so you're in, if that, you're out there dancing, looking like that, you're like, oh, I'm good enough to be one of them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now the whole, for those who watch the Bama Rush doc series, it goes off the rails because it ends up being about the director, almost like settling scores with people who were mean to her about her alopecia. It took a oh. weird twist. Yeah, dude, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. It went from, oh, okay, we're going to get this inside look about the Bama Rush process. And then it ended up turning like this into this weird documentary about a vendetta about being made fun of because of her alopecia, which I get it. I, I get that. But what was interesting is they ran, the director kept running into brick walls because once the sororities figured out that somebody was trying to do a documentary on them, they shut it down. Sure. They're like, you do not talk to this person. If you do talk to this person, we will kick you out of the sorority. If you're rushing and you give access to this person, you will not make the sorority. And then you got the connections on top of the connections on top of the connections that are also kind of putting the kibosh on that because they don't want anybody to know what's going on because that's part of the hook, right? 
you put a, a great clip from yesterday's show about Bruce Springsteen. Yes. On the socials. And I said, you can't get this content anywhere. You I mean, really this, this, this discourse you really can't. about sorority booty shaking videos, <laughs> you, you, you can't get this anywhere else. Hey, Just so, so you know. So when you dropped off James at ECU, did you spend the night in the dorm? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Now, here's things that I don't get. <laughs> what? Let's get, let's get to the part that I don't get. <laughs> His dorm, by the way, was the size of this room. And there were two beds in there and a sink for some reason. So this is from the Today Show. Uh, Mom sleeps over in daughter's dorm room on her first night in college. Sweet or self is such a perfect morning show topic. Um, so the way the story goes, North Carolina mom, Lori Miggins, she recently dropped her daughter off at App State. Only Lori did not get in her car and drive away after the last box was unpacked. Instead, she spent the night in Taylor's dorm room. Quote, I wanted her to sleep over, Taylor tells today. We're just so close, and I didn't want to be alone. Taylor, who came to campus early for cheerleading practice, notes that her roommate wasn't there, due, wasn't due to arrive until the following week. Having my mom there helped with my anxiety so much. Now, here's where things get weird. Okay, fine. I'm going to understand it. Whatever. You're, you're anxious. You want your mom to stay with you. Okay, cool. I'm not going to. That's whatever. But then Lori gets on Instagram and posts this. Wait, Lori's the mom or the daughter? She, this is the daughter. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Lori's the mom. So here's the mom. And she posts on Instagram, new college mamas. Here's an easy way to send your firstborn off to college. So yeah, it's just her on the other bed of the dorm. And I'm not, no, it's like, I know not everyone will have this chance, but if you can do it, very lucky that athletes moved in early. Her roommate's bed was available to have that chance to spend the first night in my daughter's, co daughter's college dorm room with her, not to finish up and say goodbye. She, you know, the mom's basically making herself a main character in that situation. That is a mother daughter dynamic that I do not pretend to know or will ever know, nor am I interested in knowing that. But I feel, Joe, that there's probably a different dynamic. Between a dad and his daughter, or a dad and his son, and I don't know about you, but I can tell you full damn well that the minute we send Caleb off to college, he wants our ass out. Out! Yeah, my wife just said to me today, like, school starts next week for Jackson High yeah. School. She's like, oh, we should we should do something with Jackson tonight. I go, I, I got really bad news for you. <laughs> Jackson's not interested. He's not interested. In doing anything with us. No. Just so you know. You want to take him hostage and take him to go get Mexican? Cool. But that's what it will be. It'll be a hostage situation. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I, instead of getting into a generational conversation about helicopter parents and all that other stuff. Oh, there's that element too. I, I, there's that do, element too. I'm not going to do that. I, I will say this instead. Yeah. When in doubt, the, the world famous philosopher, Michael Krzyzewski, is always right. Yeah. Everyone has to run their own race. If, if this makes Lori and her mom happy. Cool. Cool. The roommate wasn't there. Like it would be different if his roommate was there and you're sleeping on the floor and you're kind of you're 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 impeding her progress at that point. Yes. Right. Yes. As we've learned last April or April, two Aprils ago, sometimes you just have to throw the puppy in the ocean and see if they can swim. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the puppy can't you can't go save the puppy if the puppy can't swim. Of course. It just means sometimes you just gotta throw them out there. And say, okay, can you do this? If you can. You'll learn from it. You'll be better for it. Mm -hmm. But if you can't do it, there is no shame in saying, I have anxiety. I need to come home. I need you to take care of me. There's no shame in that. And we shouldn't look at it from the lens of our parents and say, rub some dirt on it, you know, and, and get back out there. Like yeah. there's, there's, there's an, in there's a happy medium yes. there in between. So, so I, totally I will just say like my, like our friend, Mike Krzyzewski likes to say, everybody has to run their own race. If you're going back to campus and you need some snazzy outfits, you know what you can do. Row back it. Row back it up. Just like Jillio does. Use that promo code OG20 for some of the best polos you can find. And it's almost hoodie season. The most comfortable hoodies that you can find. The material is fantastic. Again, go to rowback.com and use that promo code OG20. I'm currently wearing some rowback shorts right now. They become my like go-to shorts. They're incredibly comfortable. I love my rowback pants. Love that. I might have to upgrade to some rollback pants uh, once basketball season rolls around and I have to look somewhat respectable. <laughs> like, I can't be rolling up to Cameron Indoor Stadium to find my media seat in shorts and Burks. It's time. It might be time to get some pants. So, again, go to rollback.com, use that promo code OG20 to save 20% off your next order. 
Big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer. You can check them out online at wh.lawyer, attorneys and counselors at law. We also thank our corporate champions at Hometown Realty. MyHTR.com is the website. A lot of new construction. You know, whether you're driving out to Boone, whether you're driving out to the beach, drop your kid off at UNC Dub or Greenville, like uh, like Chilio did G Vegas last week. You're going to see a lot of new construction going up across North Carolina. The builders have incentives. Hometown Realty can help you out with that. So check them out, myhtr.com. Let's see. Let's say you've got that house. You want to make sure you enjoy the reason why you bought that house. Maybe it was an amazing patio, an amazing deck, the devil's deck. Well, you want to get mosquito authority to make sure that the mosquitoes don't ruin it. So check out bugsbite.com and you get the inside of your house taken care of as well. With pest authority, you can bundle and save at bugsbite.com. We've got a lot to get to. It's a lightning round. Yes, folks, we actually do have a lot to get into in the lightning round. Has Seth, did I miss the memo where Seth Jarvis signed with the Canes? Um, it's, <laughs> y'all, it's, it's August 20th. It's August 20th. I thought the whole Marty Natchez deal, yeah, we know what the cap space is. We know how they feel about Seth Jarvis. He looks healthy. He's back on the social media thing, and there's still no contract. Did I, I didn't miss the memo, did I? I'm trying to think of who Tom is when it comes to these situations. What is the apt analogy? But Tom's not paying you till he has to pay you. So, but what else is there to wait for? I'm, it's going to cost you more money. I'm just telling you what the man's <laughs> motivation is. So, I also think Seth Jarvis is looking at this and going, you know, if I sign for eight, I'm kind of capping myself here. I might be better off doing the same thing they just did or doing the same thing Ahu did and taking a shorter deal and getting into free agency. Like, Do you think the calculus is this is what I put up hurt through a good chunk of the season? No. And I can put this together even better in a healthy season? I suspect his number is 10. That's what he's looking for. Um, That's what I would suspect. Okay. I mean, you say 10, but the cap's got to go up. I mean, I know the NHL had that weird, like post pandemic year where the cap didn't go up, but it is, but their comps, but his comps are around that amount. Eight, 8.5, not 10. Okay. All right. Just telling you that the incentive to sign earlier and younger is to get more earlier and younger. That's fair. Then you would, if you had waited, that's you, that's the compromise you're making. Otherwise, you you play it out and say, "Fine, you want you want to give me that? I'll take it as a two year deal, and then we'll do this again in two years." It's a bet on yourself, sure enough. Um, but yeah, Tom Tom's not paying you till he knows he has to absolutely pay you. You put a due date on that on that higher interest car loan. Well, that that's how the man. That's his brain. That's how it works. Okay. Well, you know what? There's a reason why he can buy a he can buy an NHL franchise, and we can't. Correct. So. He's smarter than us when it comes to money. Absolutely. Topics, deck it up. Julio, throw back it up. Well, I know what we'll do. A lightning round. The thing about Brian is his dedication to actually nailing the cover. Mm-hmm. I think that's his super secret talent. Nailing the cover. Got to commit to the bit. The man... Has a future in radio I mean, or past. I mean, <laughs> right down to right down to making sure the guitar sounds the way it's supposed to sound. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the other like he'll obsess over that. That's where Brian is. Speaking of uh, things that people are obsessed with right now, they're obsessed with what Tua Tagovailoa had to say about Brian Flores to the Dan Levitard show yesterday. That's to to summarize it. Essentially, Tua said Brian Flores was super super negative. Kind of confirmed what we all understood about Brian Flores not wanting to attack Avila as his quarterback, and part of the decision to move on from him and bring Mike McDaniel's in was to make Tua work. Now, the reason why this is caught on like wildfire, wild Flores, wild flower, is easy. Wild flower, what Flores? The reason why this is caught on the way it has is because it's not every day you hear a quarterback publicly shit on their previous coach the way that he did. And the essence of what Tua was saying is, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a head coach that is always going to be negative about you because they didn't want you? You're not my guy. Or would you want somebody to come in like Mike McDaniel has and gas you up, telling you you were the perfect person to run what we're trying to run? 
you're doing this the way we want you to do it. A little bit more positive. Now, on a certain level, I can see where two is coming from. I mean, I've been in that situation where I've had managers who are like, hey, are very good about feedback and constructive criticism, but ultimately feedback of, hey, this is really good. We need more of this. Keep doing this. And I've had the opposite of that, where you've had people, it doesn't matter what you do, they're always going to find the negative aspect of what you did or did not do is more focused on what you didn't do rather than what you did. So I understand where two is coming from. If you if you're trying to achieve another level, you want to be around people who actually believe in you rather than using negativity to try to motivate you. I think that's what two was coming down to. And I agree with what he was getting at. This is definitive proof as to why Bill Belichick has no coaching tree. Yeah. At least one of any merit. Yeah. And that is Belichick didn't just shit on people, but the way that his assistants took it was, I'm going to be hard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be negative, just like Bill was. Mm -hmm. Well, not in every circumstance. Okay. So this is definitive proof of why the Bill Belichick coaching tree doesn't exist. Flores was not, I don't know. I don't know if he was a bad coach because he was in a situation where his team was trying to tank. Well, they were trying the to management tank. didn't want him to win and he did win some football games. Yep. Of course, he's a defensive guy. The way that they won games was they ran the football, mm-hmm. they didn't turn it over, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Watch rinse, repeat. There's only a certain way that you can play when you're shorthanded like that, right? Yeah. But good for him for calling him out. You said this doesn't happen often. Good for him for calling him out. You know, <laughs> and I think in that situation to be able to do that because of the success that he's had mm-hmm. with Mike McDaniel. So good for Mike McDaniel as well. Of course, there's another issue around the Dolphins. He got his money. He got his extension. Um, the Dolphins, unfortunately, under Mike McDaniel, have shown you to be the exotic sports car. I talked about this all last season. They beat the teams that they were supposed to beat by pretty considerable margin when they actually went up against a comparable team or a Super Bowl contender for real. They they would sputter. So I'll be really curious to see what they learned from last year. If they actually, I mean, they dealt with a lot of injuries last year too, the Dolphins, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, but Defense aside, we kind of understood where the Dolphins were as the season progressed. If you got them off schedule, if you could disrupt their well-oiled machine, they had a really hard time finding another way to win. They had a really hard time going off-road mode. They needed perfect track conditions to make things work. Don't disagree, but but they were the best team in the first two months of the season. Cool. They had the best-looking offense, the most efficient offense. What's that get you? You have to protect your serve. Yes. That's what they have to do. That yes. is their path. Yes. Obviously, the year before they go to Buffalo, they freeze their nuts off, they lose. Last year, they have to go to Kansas City. They don't even freeze their nuts off. They're just already in an ice chamber. They lose. Mm-hmm. Okay? You got to get yourself at home. You got to get yourself in that sunshine. You got to protect your serve. We saw this with Peyton Manning, too, by the way. he When he was at home in the Dome, didn't have to go play in the snow in New England. Guess what? Team went to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's that's the next step for the Dolphins. I think they can do that. You yada 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 the defensive injuries. They were significant I defensive I injuries. Wasn't trying to, I wasn't no, trying I know, to yada, no, but I know your it. I know your point. But they had they lost two of their absolute dudes on defense yes. last year, right when they needed them the most. Yes. So if they can hold serve, I do believe they can go to the Super Bowl. But they have to hold serve. Hey man, windows there for them in the AFC East. Okay, I mean the Jets. I'm convinced they're still going to be an absolute dumpster fire. Um, the Patriots, as we discussed earlier, are in a rebuild mode yep. following Bill Belichick. Hard reset. And I'll be really curious to see what Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills look like as their window seems to have gotten a little tighter without Stephon Diggs. We'll we'll see if they let if they let Josh Allen cook, if you will. I actually like the Dolphins to come out of the AFC East. If they let Josh Allen cook, yeah, they, they have no him. choice. So we'll see. We'll see. Because when Josh Allen is allowed to cook, he's gonna make a lot of mistakes. I mean, you take the good with the bad, but they're gonna, they're gonna, they won when they kept Josh Allen controlled. Bold prediction for 2024. And that is? McDermott gets fired. Dayball gets fired. Whoever the next Buffalo coach is hires Dayball as the offensive coordinator. And you see a renaissance next year. Problem solved. I saw, speaking of the Bills, I saw this cursed headline on on ESPN this morning. It was a cursed ACC headline. Mitch Trubisky and Marquez Valdez-Gantling, MVS, uh, hurt this week and likely unavailable as the uh, Bills wrap up their preseason slate. The Bills will not be playing their starters in their last preseason game. I I don't care. Which happens to be against the Carolina Carolina Panthers. Panthers, which... Buddy... 
Juice Luton is hurt. Juice Newton, my guy, he's out. Yeah. I think we're getting a full Jack Plummer experience oh. for the Bills versus the Panthers. Now you're th- sitting here thinking, well, the Bills can't possibly have a worse quarterback than Jack Plummer. Right? And I would tend to agree with you. Yeah. But they have Danucci. Ben Danucci is Danucci's their third the league? string QB. He's still in the so league. So we're, we're going to get a full game, I believe, <laughs> of Danucci <laughs> versus Jack Plummer. Give me the Bills plus two at home. Oh, man. When I saw that the Bills were not playing their starters, and I haven't seen any updates from Dave Canales as of this recording, so maybe this changes. But if the Bills aren't going to play their starters, then there's no reason why the Panthers will play their starters before the start of the season. And, buddy, are the takes on Bryce Young and the offense going to be extra? I'll just reiterate what I said yesterday. It's fairly clear that the Panthers are worried about depth. And the last thing you want to do is put Bryce Young in a position with a busted up offensive line or an offensive line that doesn't have all their pieces or skill position guys, not all their pieces, put them out there and gain nothing out of it. They're putting extra value on the actual practices that are run, the joint practice against the Jets where they were going up against the ones, 60 plays or so. That's where they're going to put their value. So be it. I guess it all kind of comes down to what you think the Panthers season is really going to be about. I don't think they're a playoff team. It really is just about, can you just not be a 2-15 and 15 team? Can you look like you're Give well us some run? progress. Give us some progress. Yeah, like you don't have to win a bunch of games. You just have to look like you know what you're doing. That's all, that's all that folks are asking from the Panthers this year. And I don't think that gets taken away if they don't have any sort of preseason success. All right, let's get out of here on this one. So you told me, hey, man, did you see Bill Barnwell on ESPN Plus? I'm like, no, why, what? So I see this. It says predicting five NFL teams most likely to improve in 2024. I'm like, well, okay. The Chargers? Yeah, well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense because Jim Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. They were Everybody was convinced they were wasting Justin hey, Herbert. Graduating from coaching malpractice to a fully grown adult okay. who knows how to manage a team and a game. The New England Patriots. Uh, okay. I mean, you saw the tail end of the Bill Belichick era. Uh, it run its course. Uh, maybe there's new optimism, a new energy that's coming out of Gerard Mayo. Maybe. As a point of context, Bill Barmo is like the mathiest of math guys. Like these are not like, I really believe in, you know, um, Jared Mayo. Yeah. This is like, he's proving like he's going back. Like turnover margin is a big one. If you were lousy in turnover margin the year before, he's basically saying the, the odds and chances are you're going to be good at turnover margin this year. I mean, if you were lousy in one score games last year, the odds and chances are you're going to be good in one score games this year. So it's, it's a pure math formula. This is not like him. There's some extrapolation there, but this is sure. not like him being like, you know, oh, this is, this is, you know, this isn't a guess is what I'm getting at. He also gives you the math. Like I think he said 29 of his 34 of, of, of the teams that he's predicted in the last 10 mm-hmm. years have done this. Yeah. Have improved. Well, so, I mean, he even he even brings up my guys, the football almanac. Okay. He yeah. even brings this up. Yeah. The FTN football almanac notes the Bill Patriots Barnwell over there crunching. Same guys, just crunching numbers. Yeah. Tape eater over here. Uh he says, yeah, the Pats uh, were the league's third most injured offense and the most injured defense by its adjusted games lost metric. There's little reason to think that that will happen again. So that should help. See, there's all sorts of reasons. Washington Commanders. Okay, cool. That's the Jaden Daniels effect. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Wait. I'm, I'm sorry. Did, did you just put the Kansas City Chiefs in the most improved? Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Proved. In list. some ways, he's Barwell starts like this. In some ways, the Chiefs don't really fit on this list. Yeah, I mean, they only won the Super Bowl. Back to back. The improved side of this column usually includes teams that are subpar from the previous season. Since having a bad or having bad luck or timing often results in teams losing a lot of games. Andy Reid's team had a perfectly normal record in one score games, and its point differential would have projected to produce 10.8 wins, which isn't far from where it ended up in reality during the regular season. Instead, there are other factors under the hood for the Kansas City Chiefs that led me to project them to jump past 11 wins this season. And guess why? Can you guess why? Did you read this? I did read it. I'm okay. just like, once I saw their name, I was like, oh, damn it. Because he's really good. Bill's really good. I saw it and I'm like, oh. big reason why is turnover margin, much like turnover luck can benefit you. Uh, turning the ball over a bunch 
doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be replicated the following year, which is something that he points out with Patrick Mahomes, who had the most amount of turnovers last year. And more importantly, and I called this when they drafted Xavier Worthy, and we saw it from the aggregated reels where people were freaking out about wide receiver catches. They're not going to have back-to-back shit years at that position. I know. They're just not. (laughs) They're just not. They're like, oh, okay, we'll we'll see you there. (laughs) Exactly. So you've got Rice in year two. You've got Xavier Worthy, who's added. You got rid of the boneheads that were dropping passes more often than not. So they're going to have, you still have Marquez, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, MV- speaking of MVS, he's gone. <laughs> and you've got Travis Kelsey, you know, probably swan sawing this year. So they'll be fine. What a middle finger that was to me, the Chiefs. <laughs> hey, by the way, we're going to get rid of your kill and bring in Marquez Valdez Scantling. And by the way, we're going to win the Super Bowl. I love that. Sure. I love that. Sure. Let's take a, we, we kind of took a hockey break when we talked about Seth Jarvis contract. Let's take a break. Let's take a hockey break. Brought to you by Happy Inhale. If you don't want to wait, download the app for Happy Inhale. Order your food, have it there ready to pick up. You're in, you're out, easy peasy. That's the beauty of Happy Inhale. So check them out, download that app. We were there last week for an OG Live. It had the Burger Bowl, which really is an approximation of a fast food restaurant hamburger. Mm -hmm. It's really good. The ingredients are a lot better. I can tell you that. We're talking whole food here. And the burger sauce that went with it was really, really good too. They nailed the sauce. They nailed the sauce. They really, really did. Uh, But if you want a smoothie, you can get that as well. Of course, download the app and go from there. Let's say you want to upgrade from a a smoothie, something that's sensible during your lunch break, but then you want to treat yourself later. Mm. That's when you go to Roosters. Go to roosters.com. Jared did wonder, is Jared Plummer better than Jack Plummer? No doubt. Without a doubt. Would you rather rather be part of the secret pint of the month club? Or would you be part of the very public interception of the game club? (laughs) I think the choice is clear. Obvious. Very clear. So go to tworoosters.com. Check out their new flavors. Check out all of their locations. Big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm. Check them out online, insuregarner.com, boginsurance.com, or call them directly at 919-779-8277. You can save money on your home and auto. And once we get into the college football season, you know you're all going to be hyped up for the Matt Davis 12 Game of the Week. All right, let's get out of here on some Hey Joe questions. Let's move over to the YouTube comments section. What do we got here? We got uh, from Curtis. Thanks for having Mark Packer on. Five years of the ACC Network. Yeah, man. I feel like we've been talking about the ACC Network for 20 years, but it's actually only (laughs) been on the air for five. Uh, Yeah, from Kenneth. Excellent show. Love Pac-Man dropping by. RIP Get Some Guy. It was a winer line legend, the Get Some Guy. Keep up the good work. Uh, from LAC, if I ever get back to North Carolina, I demand to be taken on a tour of all the corporate sponsors. All right, man. Let's see if yeah, we can work Lewis, that out. We got you. From Dave, I had to row back the video up several times to listen to the new Green Day Lightning Round. Hats off to B. Shaw. Yes, he's he's good on that. JJ, Gilio, preseason unders are killing for me. I uh, know. Ever since that uh, Hall of Fame game uh, debacle, the unders have been have been solid. Uh, from Corey, you can bet on preseason football. Are we Russell? Are we betting on WrestleMania too? Have you bet on WrestleMania? I I have not. There's usually a cap on things like that, and also legitimate books don't typically offer I those see. types of props. I see. From where Lu- the outcome is determined. From Ludicrous, do not repeat. Do not <laughs> bet on the Cowboys winning the division. I already did yesterday. <laughs> NFC East has not had a repeated champion <laughs> since 2004. It's either the Eagles or the Commanders that are winning. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Uh, from Blind Lemon Jello, <laughs> your uh, Wegman's Bills gear is back, apparently. I saw that. Yeah. So you can go do that. I don't know. Uh, I Have you had the Josh's Jacks or whatever those things are called? No, the barbecue sauce, remember, was... Oh, uh, that's right. All right, so I got something for you. 
remember where are you were you old enough as a kid like when the christmas like sears catalog came out oh yeah and you pick stuff out i was hardcore into that okay i was hardcore maybe maybe you got into like uh your teens and maybe there was a stray victoria's secret or from yeah. hollywood catalog yeah that, you could be desperate to even look at the sears catalog because yeah, they like, did have some pajamas in yeah there. yeah right you know look what i got in the mail today sir <laughs> what <is> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh look if at this you isn't entrepreneur porn <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> what is for those who don't know since we have an llc <laughs> um th this is like you can order uh netting and stuff for your shoes oh we need that for the podcast um for your beard there <laughs> hey hey maybe you need some shelving for for your workspace oh, we do need shelving we we actually do need shelving we do need a gear space. locker that's true uh, um Let's go. Let's see what else we got in here that might be appealing. Don't think we need. Oh, oh, look at the rugs, man. We want to get our own custom ACC. Oh, that is OG Media accomplished greatness. Yeah, that is that is some that is some I industrial mean, grade material right there. <laughs> that is that is meant to last under some work boots for I sure. Mean, Joe, <laughs> what do these people think we do? But but we by the way, for, we talk for a little. By, by the way, what's that? Outdoor and golf balls. Ooh. Look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. Oh, whoa. We can get a branded Weber grill. Dude, this thing came and it was bulky. And I'm like, what? And then I started flipping through it. And I was like, oh, how, ask me the, how much yellow pad can you get? Tissues. <laughs> oh, jeez. How much yellow pad can you get Whew. for that? Eat your heart out, Joe. The, the best of you line right well, here get some DraftKings winnings off your preseason bets and maybe we can order some of this stuff from phil on twitter you're not a, you're not you're not the only sicko joe there we go apparently he put a, a cover put some, city baby put some money on that jets and panthers <laughs> see <laughs> hammer the bills Donuch. from bennett on twitter uh in relation to the tell your family f off because football's <laughs> back no lie, heard a guy at the pool this weekend going over the Saturday schedule to his wife and trying to use it to get out of taking his kids to something. I'm telling you, man, the most powerful aspect of football is that it gets grown ass men to out, like openly admit, I am over my family. I don't want to see them. I don't want to have any moments with them yeah. because I got to be on the couch to watch a meaningless college football game on October 12th. And finally, from our guy Sam out in the outer bank, Sam Walker OBX, NC State basketball coach, Wilmington businessman, open upscale piano bar and cocktail lounge in downtown Wilmington. Kevin Keats in the bar business. What? When are we doing a show from there? Get them up. Get it done. OG live. Get Let's you on go. the Do we get Hayes Permar to hit up the piano bar? <laughs> yes, we need to. Just oh. do just do some live radio from there? Yes. Make that work. Yes. Somebody somebody calling you? Yeah, I'm going to do some radio. Oh, we went that long? It's Joe. Who are you doing radio with? <laughs> All right, on. folks. Can you hear me? All right, folks. We're done. Joe's got to do a radio hit. We'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>